was looking at the mirror. I'm like brushing my teeth. And in the mirror, I see behind me the biggest fucking bug I have ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. And I, it's just like on basically the door behind me. And it's like this big to the point that I was like, is that fake? Like, I've never seen a bug did, that did big. You say, did you say cockroach three times in the mirror? And that's why? It, <laughs> it could have been you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Takes. <laughs> yes, welcome. No, I almost wanted to start the show since we're doing this virtually, like just staring and no, no, say nothing. I wanted to just stare at you for a while. That felt good. <laughs> yeah, it did feel I good. like that. I could have kept going. Like, that's how tired we're both tired today. I actually felt like we could have just ended it yeah. there. <laughs> as soon as it began, we could have just stopped and stared at each other and f probably fell asleep at yeah, some we, point. Yeah, we are both recovering. Me from lack of sleep. And then you had the, you mm -hmm. had a shot. Was it flu or COVID, you said? Yeah, so I got a COVID booster because. Everyone in New York is sick, like everybody um, at Demi's work, like just walking around. Of course, right now it's like it could be the flu, just a cold. I mean, who knows what it is? Obviously, that's that's not the point. I wasn't like fearing COVID, but just figured like they came out with a new booster with the newest I guess little concoction. The newest microchip. Viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The newest microchip. So the yeah. update so they can um, reach further into my thoughts and mind. Um, so yeah, I got that. And then I just felt so tired. But also the weather went like it's super cold here now. All week it was like hot. Now it's cold. It officially feels like fall. It's rainy and it just smells like fall. Mm. You know, when you can go outside and you're like, I smell the dead leaves. Like I smell the crisp in yeah. the air. So October is here and I'm just and tired, but it's, it's my birthday Eve Eve. Wow. So ha it's my birthday weekend. Happy birthday weekend. I thank you. I do celebrate multiple so days. I and and, uh, so. and I'm glad that you could have the the COVID booster to put you in this sort of sleep deprived yeah. state to celebrate because honestly, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, having not slept last night, really, I'm not really sure if it was caffeine or we, we talked about I watched a horror movie. Maybe I was just spiraling about that. But you get into this delusional yeah. state in the morning like like you you're frustrated at night when you can't fall asleep, but then the sun comes up and you're like delusionally awake. Yes. And that's a mm -hmm. not a bad energy to ride out until you crash. Like yeah. I'm going to crash at some point yeah. today, but it's not a bad way mm -hmm. to celebrate a birthday just in that delusionally yes. happy state with drinks, with baseball, playoff yeah. games, and just you have that tinge of just mental instability from lack of sleep and recovery yeah. to to color your birthday mm -hmm. i'm on a bender basically because i felt like this since friday and it is now sunday and my birthday is tuesday so i'm just gonna probably feel like this all the way until I go back to work yeah. on Wednesday. <laughs> so <laughs> I won't remember much and I'm not even drunk. I'm just like sleep deprived. Um, and yeah, high off of that COVID. Yeah. I, so I might go to a music festival in a couple weeks down here in Panama. And I was thinking about taking Molly or LSD or something, but I might just get a COVID booster just based on what you're saying. Just exactly. to like roll through that delusional high and just really, really just <laughs> get to another space ethereally and spiritually mm. that I haven't been able to to do. So it sounds like, it sounds like a good idea that a lot of people great ideas have been repurposed from yeah. other things. So why not roll your face off on a booster? Yeah. I mean, listen, I feel like people are trying to say other things about the COVID booster. I'm like, have you tried it? Like, listen, you can get high off of the viral, yeah. <laughs> the viral load. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so I'm doing I'm doing well, and hopefully I don't get COVID now. But you never yeah, know. Yeah. Well, well. Speaking of viral loads, <laughs> <laughs> great. A Missouri high school teacher is put on leave after school officials discovered her OnlyFans page, and okay, that I, I assume you know there were loads involved and if you're suffering from covid sure. then that automatically turns it into a viral load but that's not what is being discussed here it's more about the ethics of being a teacher and also having an only fans page so let's let's dive into this this missouri high school story so this this is brought to you by the wonderful people at ap news a missouri high school teacher says she has been placed on leave after officials discovered that she was performing on a pornography website, OnlyFans, to supplement her salary. Which I have to say, it does feel a little disingenuous or or mm-hmm. kind of, uh, what do you call it, just bad faith to call OnlyFans a, just a pornography website. Because, yes, 90% of it is tits, but there is the odd person teaching guitar on only fans you don't see videos of someone teaching yeah. guitar lessons on Pornhub. that's it if you were just spanking it to milf porn and then all of a sudden the next recommended mm-hmm. video is i'm gonna teach you how to play stairway to heaven you'd be like this is fucking yeah. weird but only fans there are people that aren't doing straight porn so i feel like you have to acknowledge right. that at least a little bit so brianna copage or copage who taught at St. Clair High School, says her teaching days are probably over, but she acknowledged she knew the risks when she started the OnlyFans page. Coppage told the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that she was put on leave on Wednesday after being interviewed by two administrators. Her access to school email and other software was suspended while the district investigates. Damn. So she she got the boot from being a teacher for OnlyFans uh, or for for being a teacher and having an OnlyFans page, which I think is the best scenario if you're a teacher, because we're so worried about teachers fucking kids. That, that That's always in the news. People like whether mm-hmm. you're on the left or the right like when a teacher fucks a kid everyone's like oh how hot was she who who was who was the teacher who was the who was the student like we want to immediately go and see who like who were the people involved yeah. in this yes pu- yeah. that is true and so we're like was it a guy was it a girl if it's a woman we're like is she attractive like yeah I just want to know: Are the teachers attractive? Yeah, you know? there's, <laughs> there. <they're, laughs> I just want to know, like, what's the what's the yeah. incentive here? For no, the that's students? that's something I'm always like, <laughs> okay, if it was a f- female teacher and she's attractive, the undertone is always that, well, it the guy that she had sex with is just infinitely cooler now, so no harm was done. She got yeah. off. The, the kid is now the coolest 16 year old in St. Louis. He's probably traumatized, but he's still the coolest guy until he graduates. And then, like, he just probably falls into that. Like, oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> I, that might have been, like, illegal. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, maybe I was too cool in high school. Maybe I peaked too yeah. early and now I'm having yes, PTSD. Yes, exactly. There, we, What's the the yes. Zach Galifianakis joke is that when a when a high school female teacher fucks a student, the student or, or or there was one case of a high school female teacher fucking a student. She was thirty five. The kid was sixteen, and the kid died from getting oh too many God. high fives. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and it's always yeah. that way if the if the the girl teacher fucks the guy, but then when the guy teacher does it, it seems kind of creepy. If a 35 year old dude is having yeah. sex with a, a 16 year old girl, you're like, ah, oh, that's not good. It's that's- super weird. I mean, either way, it's weird. It The only difference is, is that, yeah, it's like you in some ways, like the teenage boy gets a little bit of like, oh, congratulations, like. 
you scored like a cougar yeah. or something. The teenage girl is just like, okay, you were like sexually assaulted. <laughs> like, like you go totally different directions yeah. with it. <laughs> but it's always weird for the adult because I mean, I think about like high schoolers and I'm like, those are children. I mean, I see high schoolers walking by my place going home from school and they look like kids. Yeah. So these people are super fucked up in the head to be like trying to sleep yeah. with them. So I do think going on OnlyFans is a safer option. Yeah, it's it's the best. The we're we're constantly saying you, you see these stories and people go, oh, this is obviously it's not good. Even the girl, the the girl teacher on the the guy student, even though the guy is infinitely cooler in that scenario it's still like something is off here so why not like mm. she she should be congratulated for having an only fans page and not having sex with her students if yes. anything she should get a raise yeah. she should get more coffee and the the teacher's lounge yeah she should get a raise is the yeah. big thing because that's probably why she's working on only yeah. fans to begin with is because the teacher's salary yeah. <laughs> is like yeah, dirt like 400 dollars a year so. or something like that i don't even i don't even <laughs> yeah. know like what it's usually like a 30 it starts at like 30 grand a year which is like a super low salary if you want to buy a house and like live like a normal yeah adult. She, she should be rewarded for not only avoiding sex with students by creating an only fans page but showing students how to create alternative forms of revenue yes. streams how to be how an to be entrepreneur, entrepreneur. because there, there's always the guys that talk about it on youtube in the the manosphere where they go you gotta start shipping funnels and buy my course and then it's all bullshit but she's just living the OnlyFans life. And she's like, look, it's on my page. I have 8,000 subscribers. I'm making this much a month. I'm not having sex with kids. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm be teaching these kids financially. I'm, I'm encouraging them. I'm empowering them to mm -hmm. become their own people with, with OnlyFans. I agree. Now, did you say this already or do we know what she was doing on OnlyFans? So she was doing like sexual stuff or was she playing So it guitar? didn't say she might have been doing both. Who knows? We, she we is an educator. Know. Okay, so we don't know what exactly she was doing. Yeah, on it doesn't OnlyFans. say what subject she taught. So if she was a music teacher, I could see some sort of parlay situation where mm -hmm. she's playing the guitar and all of a sudden she's like oops there goes that strap there goes the, there goes the guitar <laughs> strap and my bra strap oh yeah. god <laughs> and then she's yeah. incorporating that but she, it doesn't say what she was doing exactly and i did go to her page and you can't see it okay. unless you subscribe but it kind of looks like oh. they have the blurry pre-image and it kind of looks like she was doing solo yes. stuff and it also said in the article that she has a husband that knew about it so it okay. sounded like they were doing a combination or she was doing a combination of solo stuff and maybe incorporating her husband if he was into it interested <laughs> yeah he was interested in joining yeah, if he's that day interested in alternate revenue okay. streams yeah. No, I think that's fucked up. So you said they fired her or suspended She's on her? administrative leave right now. And I think so they're not I think after this her. article came out, I went to her Twitter and it said she's a fired teacher, but she's on OnlyFans. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, once they put you on leave like that, it's like you're not going to yeah. get rehired, at least not at that school. Like you're going to have to go to a different yeah. district. And and do your OnlyFans and yeah. teach in a different district yeah. now. I think that's fucked up. What state did this take place in? Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. yeah. It, mm. it, it, it also makes me think about the, the moment when it kind of hits a teacher what they've done. Because let, let's say it's the same situation as a story. Female teacher... 16 year old kid 15 16 year old kid and there's a lot of tension and build up before the sex happens and the guy's staying after class and the girl teacher is like oh yeah i'll help you out with that and all of a sudden it escalates 
into this thing, which is not what she did. This is just like the the typical like teacher fuck student situation. Do you mm-hmm. think there's a moment where they finish like the teacher finishes and then the student is like, OK, I got to go do my homework. And the teacher's like, oh, God, <laughs> like what the fuck? Like, yeah, they're like, do you have any? You brought me down. (laughs) Yeah, like I have to, I have to go do my my geometry assignment. The teacher's just like, oh my boner killer, please stop talking. And they're just like, do you you have any chocolate (laughs) milk? And oh god, please, yo, (laughs) get out of my apartment. What did I just do? Like that moment where it just hits you that you had sex with a teenager, and you can kind of block it out before the sex and then once you finish it's just like they're asking you to like do a tiktok with them or something and you're just like i yeah can't do this yeah maybe but i mean maybe yeah i think that does happen but i also think like these adults these teachers that are hooking up with high schoolers are so fucking mentally ill Mm. that they don't I don't know. They're not really thinking about that. They already know that. And they probably just don't like they get what they need out of it and just like move on. I do think there's a different dynamic that happens when it's like a woman teacher with a student and a male teacher. And I watched a show. There's a show based on a real story. I think I think it's just called The Teacher. On It's on Hulu. Yeah. A teacher on Hulu. Mm. Um, it stars Kate Mara, uh, which is Rooney Mara's sister, heiress to the. Did you know the Mara sisters are like heiresses to the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Giants? I knew that because I knew a kid in college who was dating someone in the Mara, fa- Mara family. Oh, yeah. interesting. No, that's. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, how do you get two dynasties? Like, I think one was enough. Yeah, I mean, you definitely. <laughs> gotta have some people killed for that when you're that rich yeah seriously and you know what they're decent franchises so you know more power to them yeah no very pretty you know they they the franchises will live on they have plenty of money but yeah so kate mara stars in that show and yeah the whole show is basically like a female teacher basically like falls in love with a student like they fall in love with each other but it's like She's so fucking mentally ill and he's just a kid. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they ever, I think there are small flashes where they go like, oh yeah, I'm dealing with like a child here, but they convince themselves otherwise. Yeah. And yeah, I think most male teachers, I mean, I think they just want to hook up with like a young probably virgin or something i think it comes yeah. maybe from a different so, so angle i think the that's a good point because i i think the female teachers are weirder in a sense because adolescent Kinda. guys are so fucking immature if the, the female teacher yes. that would have wanted to hook up with me when i was 15 or 16 years old is out of her fucking mind and then yeah. you have it the other way where you know maybe you have a 28 year old teacher that you know he skews younger and then there's a 16 17 year old girl that she seems like she's 24 25 because she's so mature which a lot of times you do have uh with girls where they get mature at a much faster rate than guys and then guys kind of catch up which doesn't make it right at all it's still it's still fucked up but at least you can sort of see the meeting in the middle between the younger male teacher and the very mature female high school student where they kind of have that middle ground there's zero middle ground with a 35 year old female teacher and a 16 year old boy like that that is it's just control i think it's like that woman is looking for somebody that they can control and i think they they do get off on the fact that like this is like a young like teenage boy i mean it's really yeah. weird, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it happens a lot. Did anything ever, I don't know if we've ever talked about this. Did anything ever happen in your school between a teacher and a student? So I went to an all guys Catholic high school. 
Gotcha. A lot and of the weird answer things is happened. yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. The, the, the president <laughs> of my high school got stripped of his priesthood and okay Not on good. charges that someone in my year who has remained anonymous accused him of uh accused my the president of my school of, of abusing him so the student accused the mm-hmm. president the church investigated found the charges to be uh you know substantial and then our president kind of fucked off to the vatican for a while and i heard a rumor that he's now in real estate in new york city so yeah the answer is yeah like it's a different strain of weirdness uh and fucked upness when you have a priest and a high school boy because there's a lot of other dynamics going on there yeah he's 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 got the power of god behind him he's not just like i'm attracted to this kid he's like i'm a godly man i i deserve a a break i can fucking break some cheeks open because i pray three times a day i said my rosaries last night yeah, I, I deserve exactly. this exactly jesus yeah told me so. yeah he said yeah. Uh, it's it, <laughs> on the on the third day he rose again and i have risen right now so i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> use that to my advantage this is what jesus would do and that's yeah yeah so. but that's so alarming because i can also say that stuff happened in my school too and i don't know all the details i'm definitely not going to name the girl which was the student that was involved but i will name the teacher mr shinnick because he deserves it and he got fired Mm. anyways but there was some some interaction i mean just in general your teacher should not be texting you like (laughs) your teacher should not be like hey what's up in your dms you know what i mean like eight o'clock on a tuesday (laughs) exactly he was he was definitely attracted to her i mean she was kind of one of those girls that physically developed earlier than me for example so she definitely had the body of a grown woman but she still was a teenager Mm. um and yet he I guess they started talking and had some sort of interaction. I don't know all the details. I just know that he got caught because he was sending, he was like doing cocaine. He would like send oh, her good. videos of like him doing, I, there was one video where he, cause he was married and had a child and he was like doing cocaine off his bathroom sink. And like, you could like hear his, daughter in the background like you know just like playing singing whatever and he's like sending videos like shirtless doing bumps of cocaine to this teenage How? girl <laughs> so he eventually got caught and fired um and i'm sure more things happened than that that were worse the, than the that, one but. thing i will say is that there's not enough drug education in today's society so the fact that this teacher was going out of the way and saying, hey, here's how you do cocaine yeah, here's safely how you do off coke. of the surface. Here's the right dosage. Make sure you clean the bathroom sink before. You know, obviously, it's yeah. it's a little demonic to have a child singing behind you as you're doing it. That's that's like just... <laughs> and your wife probably in the other room. Just railing lines of coke and coming up and be like, oh, yeah. God. And, and your kids in the background singing like, baby shark do 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 baby shark. like <laughs> like you don't need that that that's mm-hmm. that's not something that uh that you've you've like crossed over into the cocaine psychosis at that point when you when you're just okay doing railing lines in front of your singing daughter um but yeah that's yeah. I, th- to me that's really weird cuz the the teacher the guy it sounds like he kind of s- saw himself as a teenager maybe a little bit maybe he was a little bit emotionally stunted because yeah. i feel like a lot of the guy teachers and he was not young though i mean he wasn't old but he also i mean he was probably like 40 okay so it's not like he was fresh out of college and stuff and it's like 20s it's like this was a grown man but i just wanted to point out that like this happens so often this is seriously alarming that you have an experience i have an experience I'm sure, like, if I asked my partner, she would probably have a story as well. So I genuinely think this is is an epidemic we need to focus on. I I would love to get the footage of the kid 
at the moment that he discovered Mrs. Coppage was on OnlyFans. The, like the kid who found yes. the page because I'm. it doesn't say exactly in the article how oh, it happened. You know that that went around yeah. the grave. It was quick. getting oh, everybody. Yeah. Knew that. The kid saw it, told his friends. The mom's like, what's that? She sees fucking like blurry tits on a phone. And then she goes and like, <laughs> and she sends it to the administrator. But, you know, before that, there was a moment where there was a, a 15 year old just scrolling through OnlyFans he followed some yeah. girl on Instagram that promoted her OnlyFans, went down the rabbit hole, clicked on a photo, and you saw in the little profile picture, he, he just goes, Miss Coppage? And then he <laughs> goes into the page and just, you know, sees her going to work for her subscribers like a, like a, a working woman does. And yes. technically... Technically, she's woman. still doing her job. She's still teaching in ways. So you can't say she was fired for not doing her job. She, she was she was teaching, I assume, a great number of positions and, and just situations. Techni- exactly. Very everything. important for a 15-year-old yeah. boy who is probably uncomfortable with his body and, and still wants to figure out things about sex. But you know there is that moment where he saw her and was just like... She teaches me social studies. That those are my social <laughs> studies teacher's tits on my screen right now. Yeah. And he's like, Billy, yeah. fucking Mrs. Coppage is on OnlyFans and it just goes around. That spread like oh wildfire God. around that school. I feel bad for her because it's like OnlyFans, I mean, you're supposed to be 18, like legally to be on OnlyFans as somebody who works there or as a person that i guess is just watching or whatever so it's not really like her fault that this occurred and we don't even know i mean we assume the students probably saw stuff because it's high school or whatever and we that's just what happens once something's out it spreads like wildfire but you know i just stand by like she did this because they pay teachers too little money and it's not like she was distributing this stuff to the kids. Like you're supposed to be legally an adult to be on that app. Yeah, it's not like she's and plugging her OnlyFans yeah. at the end of class. Like, I, like on exactly. a freaky like do on a podcast. <laughs> she's like, follow me. At- yeah, she's like, and my <laughs> handle is at Big Titty One Hundred and One. Yes. And you can also find me in Room One Hundred and One after class for geometry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel bad for her. I hope I I hope. You know what? I think now she should plug. Now's the time to plug the only so, fans so, cuz we want to support. So, there's a little bit more with the story and I think the the she that could be an option for her like now going full into it, okay. but in terms of the pay, it does go into a little bit more about the situation. Where it says Coppage said she joined OnlyFans website over the summer to supplement her salary as a second year teacher. She taught English to freshmen and sophomores. Oh, there you go. So she was an English teacher. You know, maybe it's always the English teachers. You know, they loved her too. They didn't want her fired. Everybody loves their English yeah, teachers. She's probably reading Fifty Shades of Grey, just stripping down on OnlyFans, <laughs> doing seminars, and and that's fine. She taught English to freshmen and sophomores and made about forty two thousand dollars last year. According to the newspaper database, she said she's earned an additional eight to ten grand a month performing on OnlyFans. Nice. Co- That's a lot of money. Yeah. It says Coppage said she chose the site because its content is only available to subscribers and she thought it would protect her identity. She said she didn't know how the district learned of her account. She insisted no content was filmed or posted while she was on school grounds. So I think because of what you were alluding to that now she is fired as a teacher she can plug her site i think that now that she's fired she should find an 18 year old high school student and do an (laughs) on-campus pornographic scene for only fans technically not doing anything illegal like go to the high school film an only fan is that not illegal to go wouldn't that be well because she's probably not allowed on she could, oh, could lend, she could rent out a set. She could, she could. She, yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm rent out a set because I don't think if they basically put her on leave and fired her, like she's no longer allowed on campus. Yeah. And I don't think that you should 
go to I just want to PSA people uh, maybe think twice about going to a school campus and filming your porn. Yes, because <laughs> you might go to you jail. Could go to jail. It would be a hell of an adrenaline rush for sure in the short term. But there could be some consequences. That's why I think it would be a good idea to get a set and then get yes. an 18 year old consensual Absolutely. student, an 18 year old guy in that school. They're probably lining. She probably as soon as she got fired, the entire entire school just dm'd her every guy in that school was like hey i've always liked you i would love to do some only fans content <laughs> love to Need take some you beer out. money you know let's let's do this and she picks one of those 18 year old guys to film a scene totally consensual post on only fans and now she's a national headlining story so her subscribers are at an all-time high and you have to use this to mm -hmm. to leverage and do a scene. So I say she just leans into it and just films a, yeah. a school scene with a willing of age student. I agree. I think that's a good idea, especially like, I mean, to think about she was making like 40 grand a year just teaching, but she was making like up to 10 grand a month. Yeah. Doing OnlyFans. That's a lot and of that money. Was for Missouri? I mean, she's rolling. And that was in before it. <laughs> she got caught. I bet you if she leverages this right, because AP News picked this up, which is not like a TMZ. This is this is like they, they report on politics yeah. and fucking like global <laughs> phenomenons. And they're she's gonna be the next like Forbes yeah. billionaire, <laughs> millionaire, she, or whatever. She should <laughs> hire a PR person for her OnlyFans, do the porno. And then use it to just get her subscribers to. I bet you she could probably get to 30, 40K a month by the end of the year if she does this right. Damn. I agree. And I guess I, I hope that for her because I really stand by. I don't think she did anything wrong. What we need to worry about are the actual predators in schools that are hooking up with yeah. kids. I think going home and doing your own porn or whatever to people that are supposed to be 18 and older. It's yeah, not the an world issue. would be a should be celebrated. She should be. the The world would be a much better place <laughs> if the horny teachers monetized their horniness on OnlyFans and priests jerked off to webcams. It would the world would be a much better place if that was how things were directed, energy wise. Just had to get rid of my cat there for a second. Permanently, <laughs> she's gone. Yeah, I just threw her in the trash. <laughs> That's good. No, <laughs> but, but but yeah, Um, but yeah, I I'm with you there. So, I mean, there might be a place for her, though, to to do some of these things in a place that maybe there is no law. So a headline came out by The New York Times that says NASA will be building houses on the moon. OK, so I think you can do as many pornos as you want on the moon. Zero, and ze <laughs> There's no law about and that. And zero gravity, limited soreness for muscles. That would be so fun. Just yeah. cum shots, just what waving if you just by. Drift like it off. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, what if you just drift off, like yeah. while scissoring? You're just oh, floating <laughs> through through the universe. I just thought of a, mil a possibly a billion dollar idea with subscribers: a Great. matrix themed okay. porno on the moon. Where you're dodging cum right. shots in slow motion, like some guy shoots a cum yeah. shot, and then the girl is just like waving back in slow motion like that <laughs> as it just like fucking goes two inches away from her face, and she's just like, yeah. And there's eight guys that are just fucking blasting off shots. That that's just what yeah. I would do in in my own head. The worst thing is is like can you imagine you're eating, you're like having a cute picnic and then all of a sudden you just get like instead of getting shadow on by a bird, you basically get just like hit with some jizz. That somebody jizz that jizz like a year ago because it's just going to be floating yeah. around. <laughs> so it's like, that's not even fresh. Like, yeah, come on. Yeah, the jizz is so powerful, it doesn't burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Somehow it gets through. Yeah. Well, isn't that the case? Like, there's just, like, kind of, like, debris. It just doesn't get destroyed, right? It just kind of floats around. I, so 
I think a lot of it gets destroyed that's smaller. The When the debris hits the earth, it's much smaller than when it originally came through. So it would be tough to get a cum shot to not dissolve in the atmosphere, <laughs> but you could properly package it. You could use some sort of, yeah, okay. uh, I don't know, like a steel box, carbon fiber box. The scenario that I thought when you said, I thought you were going to say, imagine a cum shot just floating through space and someone's pi- yeah. someone's piloting another shuttle and they're just like, oh, look, the sun. And then fucking like a semen shot just fucking splatters <laughs> all over the dash. We he's can't like, oh, see. Fuck. And he's like the it's like Mayday, Mayday, May. And then NASA has to release an article <laughs> saying that a three year old cum shot is the reason why the space shuttle just <laughs> veered off co- course and smashed into an asteroid. Like, imagine if you found out the Challenger space shuttle uh, explosion was caused by a cum shot. That's what it would be like. Wow. There is just the wealth of opportunity here. So let yeah. me read a little bit. Um, in order to make this happen, NASA is going to build houses on the moon, ones that can be used not just by astronauts, but by ordinary civilians like me and you and all of our listeners. It believes that by 2040, Americans will have their first subdivision in space. Living on Mars isn't far behind. Some in the scientific community say NASA's timeline is overly ambitious, particularly before a proven success with a new lunar landing. But seven NASA scientists interviewed for this article all said that a 2040 goal for lunar structures is attainable if the agency can continue to hit its benchmarks. So the U.S. Space Agency will blast a 3D printer up to the moon and then build structures layer by additive layer out of specialized lunar concrete created from the rock chips, mineral fragments, and dust that sits on top on the top layer of the moon's cratered surface. So, yeah, I guess we're just building shit with a 3D printer. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen like a big 3D printer. I've only seen like the little ones. <laughs> so I'm like, how big is this 3D printer that they're sending up there? Or just going to take like the next 20 years because they're just using like the tiniest little 3D printer. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like a fucking like a, one of those mini inkjet printers. And they print out yeah. <laughs> half of a piece of sheetrock at a time. To put something on the moon. Yeah, exactly. How are? Yeah, I'm curious. Like, what the hell are these things going to look like? I'm, I'm also curious how how are people still on heart transplant waiting lists and waiting for actual hearts, and we can 3D print houses on the moon. Like, we can't 3D print a heart for people on Earth, but we can yeah. 3D print a three bedrooms and a bathroom. On another, I mean, that seems easier to me. It could be. Like, if I'm a scientist, I'm like, mm, it's probably easier to just build a house it on could the moon and then save this yeah. person. I mean, a heart is very complex, and I guess you have to get it to like really function. Whereas a house, it's like, eh, you're just gonna make a square, yeah. put a, and roof you can't on rent it. out a heart. You you pay for it once, but the houses you can just keep jacking it up, jacking it up. Yeah. Over. But yeah, that is a good point. What are they gonna look like? Because I have no idea. What are they going to look like and who's going? And please tell me a camera crew is going because I immediately, my first thought is I want reality television on the moon. I got to know. Oh my God, yeah. (laughs) Like what's going on up there with the people that choose to go up to the moon? I need to see everything. I want like love is blind on the moon. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Like Love is Blind, Jersey Shore, Zero Gravity. They're going to bring back. Are they going to build a bar? They need to build a whole town. I mean, before this, we better get that 3D printer up there quick because they have a lot of work to do. No, I love I love where we're at in society where something happens like we're becoming an interplanetary slash like interdimensional species with spreading out and the first thing and and i also agree that would be interesting to watch the first thing that pops into our head is like i wonder what the reality tv is going to be like on the moon like where like i I love that that's where we're at in society where it's like the you know love is blind zero gravity version milf 
house milf manor zero gravity just having had this throwing people like we've exhausted the options so much that the only thing left to do is to take away gravity and do the same show no exactly and i'm just thinking like imagine you know we have zillow basically for like looking up real estate like i'm just imagining the headline for like a house on the moon they're like there's a lot of selling points. I mean, breathtaking views, mm. no traffic, it's quiet, but you also might have an existential crisis. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> amazing views. Can't get these views anywhere else. People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That 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 would be tough to leaving Earth. Who would want to leave Earth? The type of person that would be down to just. I mean, I feel like. And if you told someone from New York that you could have the same size apartment you're living in now, but for half the price, right? there are a lot of people that would go, I'm I was in crippling that debt. Beforehand. I am down. <laughs> if you pay for my ticket to the moon, I have so many student loans and there's so much interest and I can't afford to live. So I'm just going to ride into space yeah. and give it a shot. I was thinking that. I was like, honestly, with the inflation rates going on right now, I mean, if you 3D print me a house on the moon, I might yeah. think about it. I might think about it. And I just Googled because I am not a science person, really. So it only takes about three days to get to the moon. Oh. Th- I was thinking like, oh, it's like three years. Yeah. <laughs> I, was I thought it was off. at least a few weeks. But three days is... It Pretty says quick. here, yeah, how long does it take to travel to the moon? It takes about three days for a spacecraft to reach the moon. During that time, a spacecraft travels at least 240,000 miles, which is the distance between Earth and the moon. So, I mean, which can fluctuate depending on the route that you take, I guess, mm. you know. <laughs> you got to Google Maps that and get your get your way to the moon with the least amount of traffic but that's not long at all because i'm thinking like oh you could have like a long distance relationship with somebody on the moon yeah well i go see him like every weekend yeah (laughs) yeah that would be i think that's a show in itself right there filming filming people (laughs) that are in relationships long distance from the moon to the earth and how long it takes them to cheat in zero gravity imagine every day you have the 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 temptation of having sex but just in midair and you're texting someone that's back on earth that's tied to gravity you're tied to the missionary position but you're just watching people yeah. all around you in this globe or whatever it looks like there's just come everywhere midair reverse cowgirl huh. and you're texting someone <laughs> on earth like how was your gravity day how, that seems so cool yeah that i can't wait to go back to gravity and have sex with you wow no i also think a lot of people say that the people that live in alaska are like some of the weirdest fucking people you'll ever meet because they, they have like first of all they get no sun or they get all mm. sun like they either go they go through like extremely dark winters and then the summer it's like it's sun all the time so they're in this like weird hysteria and genuinely like everybody that lives in Alaska is either like running from something or just like never had anything anyways <laughs> like they're just in Alaska like there are murderers that live in Alaska oh, for 100%. sure Oh 100% if podcasting and just off yeah. grid if podcasting doesn't work out I'm going to the docks and becoming an alcoholic working on fishing boats in Alaska that's my backup option Yeah so I'm thinking like the moon is this sounds like that basically like the only people that are signing up for this are like we're basically going to ship the uber rich people up there because of course they're going to do this shit. And then also just like all the civilians that sign up are just like, <laughs> yeah, basically like murderers or like whatever else. They're like, yeah, uh, no reason. I, <laughs> no reason I got to leave this yeah. planet. <laughs> I love <laughs> I love that brochure for going to the moon. Is your domestic abuse yeah. catching up to you? Does your wife speak one too many times during the day and the cops are catching on? <laughs> Have you murdered one too many people? Well, here's the moon. Gravity holds yeah. you down. Zero gravity 
limitless. You kill as many people as you yeah. want and then just send them off into space. No one cares. The moon. Exactly. You could. I granted, yeah, they they got to be keeping track. I don't even know how big the moon is. Like this is how dumb my brain is. I just imagine just a rock. And we're just like on this rock. I don't envision like earth, which essentially is kind of the same thing. Like we're on earth and you see it like it's a sphere. But we're as we walk the earth, we obviously don't see that. But my brain with the moon, I, it's just a circular rock yeah. to me. You, like I don't envision anything else. How how, uh, <laughs> how quickly do you think there will become flat mooners? People that go to the moon and they're like, yeah. there's no way this shit's, this shit's round. Flat. This is all this is an optical <laughs> illusion. And they're looking back at the earth. The flat earthers are like, shit. <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> that, that does look like a circle. Yeah. They're just like that's that must be a projection. There's 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 no way that's real. Yeah. Yeah, as they're in their weird 3D printed plastic house, they somehow think that earth we managed to have like a, a hieroglyphic. Yeah. <laughs> like or no, that's a uh, that's something else. That's like a painting on a cave, right? Yeah. It's hieroglyphics. So, it's, it's something. <laughs> what am I trying to say? What's that thing like um, a mural? No, like, um, what, why, this is why we shouldn't do podcast tired, but why, what is that word where it's like, um, like if it was me, uh, me, but it's not really me, it's like a, (laughs) no, it's, um, like they've done it with, (laughs) they've done it with Tupac. Oh, Like they had like a Tupac concert. Yes, a hologram. (laughs) That's what I was going for. Yeah, that they we just hologrammed Earth and we're like, oh, you, you know, yeah, that we can do that, but we are living in a basically a Lego built house. Yeah, you know moon. who else was doing holograms is that teacher railing cocaine with his daughter singing in the background. Yeah, so yeah, holograms right there. Yeah, he was. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. <laughs> Maybe we need to go to the moon. That's what we need to do. We need to take this podcast to the moon. And we'll be the first podcast on the moon. And they have like no other option. Yeah. Honestly. They got to listen to us or nothing. We could, we could, we all could you take got. over. We could just be, you know, we'll start our own studio. We'll be ground level, zero gravity podcast on the moon. Just, yeah. just live streaming Play. we'll also be like whoever goes to the moon first is also an explorer because you're basically walking to yes. different places and going am i gonna die here or am i okay and we can just mm-hmm. go on hikes every day and then if we survive record a podcast and and send it back yeah i'm ready for it all i'm ready for like moon fashion moon reality tv i'm ready for it would you like real talk, would you go to the moon? Maybe not to live, but in general, like would you take a trip to the moon? Yes. Yeah, I would. I okay. I yeah, I don't I don't know. It's a tough question. I would definitely let other people test it out first. So if if it started today, <laughs> I'd probably wait 5 or 10 years to go until mm-hmm. it start like there was a a moon airplane service that was super reliable there there are a bunch of different airlines competing against each other i'd I'd wait until we got closer to that point where it felt a little bit safer but yeah i would i would take a trip to the moon because i I feel like it would be amazing to see the earth from the moon which yeah like how many people have done that a hundred or something like that it it not it yeah and just to experience something new like being in zero gravity, being in a different environment, having stuff to talk about as a podcast host, and just yeah, I feel I feel like the fear and the excitement would be an awesome combination mm-hmm. to have, and not having to go totally, uh, not having to stay there. Obviously, I, I that would be a huge plus being able to go back to Earth and kind of take a mooncation. Yeah, I think I would do the same. Like once it kind of feels like, okay, we've got this to be pretty routine, kind of just like 
getting on a plane and flying to Africa or Europe or whatever. It's like now it's like, okay, in theory, that's kind of crazy. But we've seen it happen so many times. It happens a bunch as we speak right now. It's happening like and nobody really dies from it. So, yeah, I mean, I probably would, too. But as we were talking about this, I was like, what happened to there was a whole point this past year where we were like sending like fucking uh sh- what's his name uh william shatner or whatever to like fucking space <laughs> like we were sending celebrities to space what happened but technically that? <laughs> i think like, it was what? just technically high atmospheric flights right they weren't actually leaving yeah, they orbit. were just kind of going up well yeah they were kind of going up they were only like in space for like maybe 30 seconds or something and then they came back but i'm like there was a whole thing and then suddenly it just stopped happening. Yeah, one, one person <laughs> like, died and they probably covered it up. They they just made a William Shatner yeah, hologram. You, you just see William Shatner yeah, walking exactly. around as a hologram. <laughs> you, you know publicists. No, they dropped him on the moon. He's making hieroglyphics on yeah. the moon. <laughs> you, I bet you going on these moon flights is going to be like, uh, what's that uh, dancing show that all celebrities would go on when their career is over? And if you... Dancing, Dancing with, with the, the stars, stars, yeah. It's either when their career is over or when they're trying to make yeah. it begin. There's no you in know between. You know publicists for people like William Shatner are calling him going, hey, look, Star Trek has been over for a while. You were on yeah. that one roast with Snoop Dogg where you said some like pseudo-racist things. We need something to get you back on page six. We, we need something. And the moon flight... <laughs> is something that, you know, mm-hmm. people are going to talk about. Whoever it is, they're going to talk about it. So why not you, William? And, you know, William is just kind of sitting there and just going, yeah, you know. He's, like, almost senile. Yeah. He's, like, M- Moon flights are going to be the new Dancing <laughs> okay. with the Stars. Moon life. It's just going to be, like, we're all watching yeah. these C-list celebrities live life on the moon. And they're doing it not because they want to explore, but because they just can't bear to be alive without being in TMZ. Yeah. Yeah, without having a headline. No, totally. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. I'm very curious to see how this goes. By 2040, I mean, if we're lucky, we'll still be alive. So yeah, um, maybe we'll see it happen and we'll we'll go up together yeah. one day and do a podcast from I would the love moon. to. And, and maybe we should go earlier than later now that I'm thinking about it because how quickly do you think the global financial autocracy is going to take over on the moon like when you have companies like blackrock that buy up all the real estate in new york and then they triple the rent price and you basically just have all these empty apartment buildings in new york that no one can afford how quickly do you think companies like blackrock are just gonna go maybe we should just buy the moon and charge the shit out of everything like water is gonna be 96 dollars and you're gonna pay $40,000 $40,000 a month. We need to set up a new government on the moon. Like, we can't deal with that shit. I'm about to be governor of the moon, okay? I'm, I'm going to start planning my political run on the moon because I will not tolerate that. Didn't, <laughs> There's no taxes on the fucking moon. Didn't either. Elon Musk say something about that where it might have been Mars where he said, just so you know, the the u.s government global earth governments don't apply on mars that's completely different so don't try that shit and then people like i bet you world leaders on earth would get pissed at someone that set up a government on mars not because they were you know mad at someone else taking risks or or just like it, it would just be out of pure lack of control like they're so used to controlling everything on earth that freedom yeah. on another planet like you can you can afford to buy a house on mars we have to stop this <laughs> wow you can feed your <laughs> <Yeah>. family <laughs> without having to do only yeah. fans <laughs> oh my you, god you, you can get health care for free on mars what what Holy the fuck shit. is that why are we not we need to buy <laughs> mars right now and reverse this yeah no i wouldn't be surprised but i'm ready i'm gonna plan my political run yeah you have my vote. And yeah, that, good. I better have your yeah. vote. I think all the listeners should vote for me to be governor on the moon because yeah. I will make your Lego house. Yeah. 
the best Lego Look, house ever. There are semi important things with going to the moon or going to the Mars, going going to the Mars, going to Mars. <laughs> yeah. The Mars. I'm going to going the to Earth. Going to the moon, the Mars. You're already talking like an alien. You're, going you're doing great. Going to the Mars. There, there are semi important <laughs> things like doing exploratory biological research to find cures for diseases on Earth or doing sociological studies to figure out human behavior and how to get people to work together be- together better to survive on earth but before that we need zero gravity sex we need zero gravity reality tv mm-hmm. i i want to be dodging cum shots and watching football and just you know doing mars drugs i want to be on moon lsd <laughs> moon i want to i want to be railing lines <laughs> of moon dust my daughter won't be in the background. Yeah. She'll be on Earth because she does not want to see what daddy's going to be doing on the moon. She'll find out when she's yeah. 18. No kids. No kids no allowed. Kids on, I'm no. getting married on the moon. <laughs> Fuck kids. I don't need kids at my wedding. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. we, we need to do the most important things first, like setting up a drug market, putting, a, putting yes. you know, reality TV and just zero gravity sex dungeons. Yeah. No, okay, that's the political agenda for yeah. me, though. So, I, you have my great. vote times a thousand. Great. Okay. Good. Any any story that can top this? Because I'm quickly going to get carried we'll, away plotting we'll, that. W- it, there's risk involved. So speaking of risky endeavors, okay. a man right. accidentally shot a child while officiate while no. officiating a wedding near Lincoln, Nebraska. So a very <sighs> Nebraskan headline <laughs> right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly why I sighed. I was like, of course, Nebraska. Yeah. So let's find out how a child gets shot accidentally because it usually I'm familiar with the story of a child playing with a gun and shooting themselves accidentally. But and another adult mm-hmm. doing it is new to me. So a Texas man accidentally shot a child while officiating a wedding in Lancaster County on Saturday, said the sheriff's office. Chief Deputy Ben Hoochin said deputies were sent to the wedding at Hillside Events near Denton on a report of a gunshot wound. Deputies learned that 62-year-old Michael Gardner, the wedding's officiant, fired a gun to get everyone's attention. Quote, he was going to fire in the air, and as he did that, it slipped and went off. The gun was loaded with a blank that Gardner made with powder and glue, gunpowder and glue. Hoochin said Gardner accidentally shot a child in the shoulder. They were taken to a hospital with injuries that were non-life threatening. Okay, well, so first, we're very happy the child has non-life threatening injuries. The first thing you said was Texas man... And that always makes me laugh so hard because I would say we can all agree that Texas is one of the biggest gun rights states. And I would I think most people in Texas have a gun, which is fine. But it's just always funny to me when it's like, shouldn't the people of Texas that are so pro gun like why are they always the ones doing this dumb shit? Yeah. <laughs> like accidentally shooting a child. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm cool with you having a gun. How about we learn how to use it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I- <laughs> That's usually what I think you should do with something that you clearly don't fucking know what you're doing yeah. with. So in this situation, do you think that learning how to use a gun in a typical course would even help because imagine the gun course that says yeah, good point when you're officiating a wedding please remember don't point your efficient gun at the child <laughs> now now they have to put that that's they rule have to number put that one. in the cor- look yeah. that wedding that you keep in your tuxedo pocket to shoot in the air as the husband is kissing the bride remember have solid footing so that you don't actually wing a 7 year old in the shoulder I yeah I I truly don't know how that happens. That's what's funny. So also when people say firing a blank for somebody like myself and maybe other listeners, that just means like it's not a real bullet. It's essentially like a fake 
bullet? I don't really fully know what it yeah, means. Yeah, I think it's like a non-projectile bullet where... You get the sound. I know you'll get the sound Yeah, I think it's like movie, like, like, a bullet like movie off. guns. I'm pretty sure there are blanks mm. in... Go- like the, the Alec Baldwin situation yeah. sh- yes, yes, should yes, have yes, been a yeah. blank. And instead, it was loaded with a real bullet, so... But I thought I, I could be wrong here. So listeners, don't shoot a blank at me if I'm wrong. But I thought that blanks, like shooting a blank still causes like an effect. Like you can still get hurt by that. You're not going to die probably, but you could still get yeah. hurt. Yeah, like force that. still comes out of the gun. I'm not sure if it's an actual projectile that comes out or it's more like the air yeah. pressure that will hurt you but it's still like from from mm-hmm. my understanding and again you know i, I let me <laughs> we're limited me, uh, <laughs> limited understanding here <laughs> let me see we need firing to a blank let me just see what comes up so firing a gun blank yeah where do we got to do our research a blank is a firearm cartridge that when fired does not shoot a projectile like a pellet or a bullet but generates a muzzle flash and an explosive sound okay like a normal gunshot would so i guess some residue or something must have been in the gun or maybe it was close enough to where the pressure from the gun hit this kid in the shoulder because it says he tripped and oh that's where God. it happened. What a loser. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining like you are a total fucking loser. <laughs> like you are probably the type of guy that's like super pro gun. I know what I'm doing with this thing. And this fucking dork tripped and shot a kid yeah. with a, thankfully a blank. But I'm I'm pretty I'm fairly certain like, yeah, you can still get hurt from a blank. So you probably just maybe shouldn't. Can't you just play the sound effect? Like, I'm sure there was a radio. Yeah. Like, can we just play? Like, can you bring a toy gun and we'll, I'll just hit you with that gun sound effect? Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't need a real gun when there are children around just trying to. They probably didn't even want to go to that fucking wedding. And their mom brought them there. And now yeah. they just got shot yeah. by a gun. I, I will say that. As someone who has officiated a wedding, and I did it about a year ago, so it's still, I can still imagine the energy of that moment. I will say that when you're talking to that many people, and this wedding was probably about 100, 150 people, and you're just up there, and you have the script, but then you just kind of riff, and maybe you get a little bit of a laugh, and then you say something, and you Mm -hmm. can feel the energy of the crowd is on your side. It does fill you up in a way where I wonder if I had a gun on me, if I wouldn't have just been like, whoop, and I just (laughs) fired in the air just because the energy in that moment is so captivating that you just want to fucking fire off around, especially when the husband kisses the bride. And yeah, in the name of love, exactly. Like if I had a gun on me, I probably would have just done a little sky pop just right, right into there. I would have made sure my footing was good first. To not have a horrific situation. But But yes, take a step back and just fucking, why not two? Just double pistol, boom, straight up in the sky. Pop, pop, in the name of love. So I do get being overwhelmed with the energy. So maybe this guy had the gun on him. Yes, okay. He wasn't even sure that he was going to fire it. And then in the heat of the moment, he just goes fucking straight to heaven, boom, and then just slipped at the last second. That's the other thing. It's like, is this a fucking movie? Like, how do you not only trip, but pull the trigger? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's one thing to f- trip and fall, but I still don't think my finger is going to go pop. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, how did you pull the trigger and trip all at the same well, time? Well, when he's tripping, because when you trip, I'm just trying to imagine, I, y- you want to, put your hands to block you so maybe with him adjusting his hands you kind of forget what you have in your hands as you're falling to the ground yeah but you need to remember you have a gun in your hand it doesn't sound like this guy (laughs) was practicing with it this is like tripping and falling on your knife and killing yourself uh, equivalent it's like you kind of like you're an idiot yeah except (laughs) instead of yourself it's a a seven-year-old in a tuxedo an innocent child exactly 
it, it sounds like the type of guy who didn't have a lot of experience holding the gun and he saw in a movie once he saw one of those scenes where people are fighting in a bar and it's an old western and the badass dude walks in and he goes hey and he fires the gun into the ceiling and the rubble drips down yeah. and everyone stops and it gets people's attention he probably saw that once had a few whiskeys before the ceremony yeah. Maybe he's maybe he's an actor. Maybe maybe he had he was going to an audition <laughs> after and he had his fucking yeah. blank ready to fucking go. And in the heat of the moment, he just went, you know what? I saw it once in a movie. It looked really cool when the the groom and the, the bride kiss. I'm going to fucking I'm going to do one straight to the sky. And he didn't practice at all. And when he did it, he didn't account that because you're standing a lot of times on a podium or a box to see over people. So you got to keep in mind mm-hmm. that with a few drinks in you and you shift your weight, you have to counterbalance that while staying on the box. So I bet it was a situation where he kind of stumbled over the box, went, oh, fuck, completely forgot about the gun in his hand, went to go try to break his fall. And then as he was doing that, shot a kid in the shoulder. <laughs> I just yeah I just feel like there's so much wrong with this story (laughs) because I'm like okay yeah weddings you usually do drink so probably not it's just probably not the best idea to have guns in a situation where you're like drinking and there's children around but it this story is funny because nobody got hurt well somebody did get hurt but nobody died which is the best part of the yeah. story and but it, it wasn't it wasn't yeah. nebraska so you know that there's a chance that the energy could have been like well you know that's what you get kids have to know you got to shut the fuck up when a wedding's going on you might get shot in the shoulder that's just what happens you know and we got to teach these kids and sometimes yeah. shit. i just feel like people were like ah oh, uncle terry yeah <laughs> she's fucking crazy yeah I told you not to drink whiskey until after the vows yeah, were said. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> like, come on. And, yeah, also, was this mid-officiation? Did he have to get back up there and finish the ceremony? <laughs> <laughs> he fucking... He's like, wait, wait, wait. I got to get my yeah. other blank. I got to go to the, the car real quick, The kid's guys. mom is just applying pressure on the shoulder. The kid's fucking, like, sitting there blacking out from losing blood. And he's like, all right, now the vows? Do you want to go first and it, <laughs> everyone's just like okay we'll continue now you have to you have to you have to be able to bring that's what people don't understand about officiating is you, you gotta even if you cause it you gotta be able to bring the energy of the crowd back mm-hmm. into the moment even if you have a kid that's bleeding out right in front of you yeah like don't let that distract you yeah <laughs> let's uh move that to the back of the yeah. room Oh, we've got a wedding going on here. There, there was one more line in the article that I found intriguing. And it was on Monday, Gardner, the guy who f- who shot the kid, turned himself in. He was arrested okay. on suspicion of felony child abuse. So not arrested on child abuse, but the suspicion that maybe shooting a child in the shoulder is abusive. <laughs> Yeah, they got to do their yeah. work here. It's just you the know, sheriff's li- <laughs> and we still got to do the studying. We're not, we're not sure. Granted, there were a bunch of witnesses, yeah. <laughs> given that this is a yeah, wedding. The, sh- the sheriff's <laughs> like, mm, that's mighty suspicious. I don't know if that qualifies as child abuse, but I definitely do have my suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> that's we'll see. true. Yeah, yeah. I guess exactly. We got to take this to yeah. trial. Uh, it's it's really hard. I'm gonna need to be convinced. Yeah, now. there there is you know not guilty until beyond reasonable yeah. doubt. Yeah, so it's I hope the kid's okay. It said it was non life threatening injuries. The guy definitely needs to practice his sky pops for sure. Like in in the Seriously. other guys with the desk pop where Will Ferrell shoots the gun into the ceiling. Did you see that? Yes, I did. He's, he's got to hit up. Will Ferrell or whoever trained him to do the yeah. desk pops to work on that balance and that technique and avoid incidents like this in the future. And I, I will say I I love yeah. the Nebraska energy. I, I love the energy of shooting a gun into the sky. That that feels good, but you gotta be prepared to do it. 
Yeah, and I do feel like the kid, like he kind of he or she kind of has a cool story forever. Like, oh, remember when Uncle Terry shot me yeah. at your wedding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah cool story he's gonna bring that up now like as the kid ages it's like every thanksgiving like oh remember when you shot yeah. me <laughs> yeah or he just has severe ptsd and at his own wedding when the vows come around he just starts fucking shaking because he thinks he's gonna get shot yeah. in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's when yeah the, that's if the story goes the wrong direction we hope the kid is okay and you know if they need therapy we hope they can have therapy yeah. and maybe yeah uncle terry needs to lay off the whiskey and honestly maybe just leave the shooting a blank to somebody yeah. else because it seems like he doesn't have the best stability yeah. or just start life. drinking after the officiation that's how i did it I, I had one drink before and then i just got plastered after it was done yeah well you should most people you're not supposed to be drunk at the ceremony. Yeah. You're supposed to be drunk afterwards. No. People got to know the rules here. Um, well, I do have one final yeah. story, which is scary. So bed bugs have taken over Paris, France. Okay. And yeah have you heard anything about this it's like all over. i haven't but i'll ask my girlfriend about it if she i'm curious to see what she knows oh yes because she's, yeah. she's french right yeah oh my god don't let her go home she's gonna come back with a bug yeah well, she, <laughs> do you know where where she's where is she from she's in, in toulouse which is a good way or she's close to toulouse that's the closest South airport or? southwest i believe okay. i love the south of france so shout out um, but yeah, so I have a couple articles here because, yeah, I mean, this is actually like a bit crazy. Um, so this is the People article. It says Paris is dealing with a massive bed bug outbreak and the pests have even infested trains and buses. No one is safe, <laughs> said the deputy mayor of Love Paris, that. which is really great to put that out to your people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, no one is safe. Like, you're just like panicking. Yeah, not- <laughs> you're scratching like on Sounds camera. Sounds like a terrorist <laughs> attack memo. Stay in your home. It's like that makes me feel really comfortable yeah. when the deputy mayor is like basically scratching, sweating, and screaming into the camera. No yeah, one. We is don't. Safe. We have. We don't have <laughs> eyes on it. Stay inside. Yeah. So basically, this is bad news. As we know, Paris is a super bustling city, and there was just a fashion week in Paris. And where do all the models come from? and go if they are in Paris for Fashion Week they're then in New York for Fashion Week so basically there's a huge like everybody's talking about this because if Paris is infested with bed bugs it's very likely that all the major cities are about to become invested or infested mm. with bed bugs yeah. um, and on top of that the 2024 Olympics are set to be in Paris so that's even more people going. So we're about to have a global infestation of bed bugs. A bed bug pandemic. And I'm scared. Yes. I'm like, close down the border, people. This is serious to yeah. me. <laughs> Shut it down. I've, I've never felt more public in my life. Shut yeah. it down. <laughs> close the yeah, border. T- <laughs> I don't want anybody it's coming gonna, in. It's going to turn into two sides <laughs> so quickly. Bed bugs are fake. Uh, it's a conspiracy. I don't. I don't believe shit. And then the other side is like, get the bed bug vaccine right now. Do it. Do it. We're all gonna die. Yeah. Uh, bed bugs disgust me. Um. Let's see. So obviously, bed bugs also just like come with a lot of health risks. Not just the bites, but like breathing in their fecal matter and everything else. Like it's basically like breathing in like black mold. Mm. Um. Yeah, so right now, basically, they're saying it's chaos over there. Like, the bed bugs are everywhere. The mayor is in panic. I have not heard from Mr. Macron, Emmanuel. What does he have to say about this? He Let's could have been see. compromised. Yeah, he's already been fucking taken over by yeah. a bug. Oh, no. So, 
Yeah, he. It just says he's been he's urging everybody to tackle the crisis. So we need to shut these borders down, people. The last thing I want, I've never had bed bugs. When I moved to New York, I immediately became terrified mm. of bed bugs. Like, it seems like so many people that have lived in New York, like, they've had an instance with bed oh, bugs. Oh, yeah. And your bed bugs, water doesn't work, and fucking central heating is either way too hot or not hot enough. I feel like those are just the givens of living in your first New York apartment. Yeah. So when we came back from Europe, uh, what, a few weeks ago or something, we made a rookie mistake of when we left, we didn't like cover up any of our dreams. Mm. And if you don't know what why New Yorkers do that, it's because roaches live like in pipes and everything like that. And usually if you're like you live in your house and you shout you shower every day, you use your sink, like whatever, you're using it so frequently like that no roaches are coming up your yeah. pipes. But when you leave your apartment sit for a extended period of time, it's more likely that something can climb up and be in your house. So after a week of being back in New York, <laughs> I went to the bathroom in my apartment and I was looking at the mirror. I'm like brushing my teeth. And in the mirror, I see behind me the biggest fucking bug I have ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. And I, it's just like on basically the door behind me. And it's like this big. To the point that I was like, is that fake? Like, I've never seen a bug did, that did big. You say, did you say cockroach three times in the mirror? And that's why? It, <laughs> it could have been you. <laughs> yeah. You could have been sleepwalking in the middle of the night and you forgot what you were saying. And then cockroach, you you summoned cockroach, the bug. Cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that very well could have happened. And it was... It's hard to describe. So basically, you can kind of see the door, uh, a door. This is not my bathroom door. But it was kind of in like the crease. Like it wanted to be in a dark spot. It didn't want to just be like flat on the door. It wanted to be kind of tucked away. But I caught it and I was mortified. So then I had to scream for my girlfriend. She's horrified of bugs. And it was like, now I hate the fact that I'm a lesbian all of a sudden. Like, I could really use a man in my life right about now to get this fucking bug out of my apartment. I will. S so I had to be the man in the house that yeah. night and get this bug. And I did it sc screaming. But, okay. <laughs> I screamed the whole but way. But did you get it done? You got it. Oh, I got it what done. What was your method? Of getting it done my method so at first we were we didn't really know I, when i tell you i think we were in the bathroom because we we went into the bathroom we were like okay we we managed to get it like closed into the bathroom so and it's still up on the door and it's up high so that was the part of the problem was that it wasn't on like a flat surface it was kind of in the crease so we couldn't like put a cup over it or anything. There wasn't like a way to get it. So we, by the, at the end of the situation, we realized that we just were in there for 40 minutes mm. and it went by like four minutes. That's how, that's how like serious of a moment this was where like time doesn't exist. Yeah. You're just panicking and plotting like how, what can I do? So eventually I was like, okay, we're going to need to like, like maybe we can vacuum it. However, the bug was so big that like the force of the vacuum, <laughs> like you basically like we were going to have to nail it perfectly. So I had to take apart the vacuum and get it where it was like just the pipe mm -hmm. of the vacuum. And yeah, I sucked that son of a bitch up. And then it was just in the vacuum. We have an expensive Dyson vacuum. So it's like the compartment is clear. You could see it. <laughs> so I had to like, and I, yes. And I'm holding the Dyson like a AR-15 basically at that point. Because it's the kind that's like a Hell trigger yeah. pump. <laughs> so I can see this massive bug in the clear container. But I have to keep pumping the trigger. Because I don't want it to like start crawling back down the pipe. Yeah. So I'm like pumping the trigger 
we had to we ran out onto the street because I'm like, we can't just put it in the trash or I don't even trust putting it in the toilet. Like I need to put this dirty little fucking massive bug back on these dirty streets. Where what about just crushing it so, and throwing it in the trash? I couldn't. I could not, Zach. It was so big. I couldn't bring myself it, to do was it. it. It was so, so big where it made you feel like you were killing an animal. It was so big that it just disgusted me. I couldn't. It's not that I felt like, oh, it's an animal. I don't want to kill it. No, I wanted it to burn and mm. die. <laughs> I had no empathy for this bug. It was just that it was so big that it would have left a mess for one. And also, aren't you not supposed to like kill roaches? Don't they have like eggs potentially? I don't know. I like when I I just killed a cockroach the other day. I do feel <laughs> like a primal instinct when I kill a bug. You get a okay. dopamine rush yeah. for sure. I'm bringing my shoe way further back than I have to to kill a cockroach. I can just give it a little <laughs> tap on the head and it smushes. But I'm fucking no. winding up like I'm about to serve a tennis ball and slamming yeah. it on the ground, flattening it into oblivion. You want to turn that bug into a paste. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's in the floor. It became part of the floor when I hit it with the sneaker. So there, I yeah. do get maybe it is a guy thing where I... I was worried. Like, I was worried if I tried to kill it, it was going to jump. Like, I didn't know the maneuver of this. So that's why we were like, we got to vacuum it up. Because I felt like if I didn't hit it perfectly, then it was going to, like, run really fast or jump somewhere. I was terrified of it running really fast. It was like, how are we going to sleep yeah. tonight? Knowing that there's this massive prehistoric creature inside my apartment yeah, like you heard it and it comes back stronger it's like when someone gets it when someone <laughs> heals their acl and they're like oh my god my knee's even better than before the surgery and this you just have this olympic level roach in your apartment and also new york city roaches are different because they're just on a constant diet of garbage fast food yeah. radioactivity just a, 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 a constant stream of nutrients and just crazy psychotic fluids that are just pumping it up to become this insane yeah. sort of like uh, dark, dark, darkness fucking ro like uh, literally a, like a thing from a comic book. When I see roaches or rats in New York, sometimes yes. I'm like, that's not real. That is a fucking they function yeah. differently. Like they know that if they wanted to run this city, they could. compared to your microphone. Like, how big would you say it was? If you turn it to the side a okay, little bit, I'll, yeah. I'll make it. Yeah, I'll make it horizontal. So I would say from the tip to probably about here lengthwise so yeah that's a good that the bug was at least three inches long yeah. probably close to four i mean it was really big and they're not like skinny i mean it's pretty wide so we i'm pumping the trigger i'm running out on the streets like a crazy person i'm literally wearing my pajamas and slippers like out on the streets of new york and just pumping a Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if anybody saw me they're like what the yeah. fuck is this person you doing? shoot a kid in the and shoulder so then, by accident <laughs> he's like oh, yeah, fuck, i reverse that? the vacuum he, he thinks he gets shot by a bullet it's a cockroach he's like oh what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i wish i wish i could have like hit reverse and yeah. shot it out of the vacuum unfortunately they didn't invent that yet on my tyson um so you have to like open the compartment and then it falls out and it fell out. It was like covered in dust. <laughs> so then it was just this massive fucking dust bunny, like going maniacally on the sidewalk because it probably couldn't see. Yeah. And it's going so fast. And then we just sprinted back into the house. So that's my story of like bugs have lost control. They're taking over the oh, world. Yeah. The, the bed bugs in Europe, the roaches over here. We're about to have a serious issue if we don't shut these borders down, gonna, people. I'm going to the moon. I was going to say, what if right they now? get on the moon? We are fucked. If, no. bug, if bugs become <laughs> interplanetary or intermoonal, I don't know what the no. word is. No. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my God. No. We can't let that happen. But I'm ready. I'm ready to 
blast the fuck off to space. If another roach comes in here, because they say, like, if you just see one, don't panic. And we've only seen one. It's been weeks now. We And that was the first one we've seen. We've lived in this apartment for yeah. over a year. That's the first one we've seen. So we really think it was just because we were gone for a couple weeks. It probably came up the drain. It was our mistake. But if I see another one, I'm signing up to go to the fucking yeah. moon. Because I got to get the hell out of here. I can't take that stress, okay? Yeah. Do you have any cameras in your apartment? I'm just imagining coming back no. and just you look at what was going on in your apartment when you left. And it's just a roach. <laughs> There's like a bunch yeah, of roaches. Yeah, roaches like, just like fucking a raving. There's a roach drinking a beer <laughs> on your couch. It's just raiding your fridge. <laughs> Smoking uh, yeah, a cigarette inside yeah, the house. Lighting <laughs> candles, taking a bath. Just roaches. Roaches gone yeah. wild, which is another OnlyFans page that, you know, if you yes. get some horny roaches, you could monetize that too. So nothing's off limits. No. No, I believe that. And I imagine the the bed bugs in Paris, they're they're definitely smoking a cigarette and drinking like some and wine. And thinking they're better than <laughs> everyone else. Just like all Parisians. Yes. And yeah. I can imagine like as they touch down, because you know they're on some fashion models Ugg boot coming across the pond mm. right now, probably. And they're they land in America and they're just like is disgusting not for me <laughs> no i love yeah. it <laughs> the more disgusting the better yeah for that's them. <laughs> true it's the opposite for roaches they're like paris is too high class for me people here are, uh, yeah. are too socialite status and then they get to new york and see a dude like a 300 pound dude sweating eating a hot dog and they just go i'm home <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah. here America they start I start seeing little bugs with like little American capes yeah. <laughs> going down the sidewalk yeah. <laughs> they're so pro-America did it, I'm curious did it say in the article how it spread in Paris because I'm so used to roaches or bed bugs in New York being a building thing P people will say oh don't live in that building it has a bed bug problem but you never really hear it jumping building to building or spreading in an entire city because i feel like if a city was to have bed bugs by now it would be new york yeah. like new york is the should have been the first one to have a bed bug outbreak so i'm just curious uh, yeah i mean basically i think it's just it there there wasn't an exact answer so my theory is and kind of just what people are piecing together with articles is just like well first of all bed bugs have always been around so it's not new like they're here in America they're here in Europe so we all know that but basically the upsurge has just been due to increased travel now mm. with like post the pandemic there's been a lot more travel and just with time like bed bugs are like becoming just like roaches like they cannot die like they now they're like immune to all of the chemicals that we try to use to kill yeah. them so, yeah, they're just, like, becoming invincible Yeah, <laughs> is basically what's going on. You know there are people that are so New York. Th they could be covered in bed bugs walking down the street, and they'll, just, and they'll still go, best city in the world. Can't get this in any other city. <laughs> I could, any street corner, you got Broadway plays, you got pizza, you got bars. Best city in the world. As there's just cockroaches crawling down their throat just <laughs> suffocating these guys like you can't get this in chicago <laughs> yeah no exactly <laughs> you know what i'm glad they saw pride in their oh country. yeah they're never fucking leaving so, they're never leaving yeah so that's my stories man like the bugs are about to take over we need to shut down the borders I'm so pro shutting it down for yeah. a while. Okay. Everybody, you got to stay where you are. I'm sorry. Well, if you're stuck in France, you're stuck there. Don't come back. You're not Well, welcome. look, if you're sleep deprived like us, but from bed bugs in, in Paris or New York, wherever you are, and you're like, I'm so distracted. I need to de-stress myself to fall back asleep. Breakingtakes.supercast.com, you know. If you're we getting gotcha. eaten alive by bed bugs, why not go out with some good content? And you can sign up for Break It Takes Premium for bonus episodes. 
We will do AMAs. There's already two episodes up there right now, three counting uh, the one coming soon this month, and and that's going to grow every month. And you can also become part of the show. You can suggest topics and questions for us to talk about on the episode. And yes, if you're getting eaten alive by bugs or your own thoughts, tune in to breakingtakes.supercast.com and and go check out the good stuff behind the paywall. I love that PSA because we're always here to help. And I will be podcasting to the day I die, to the day the bug takes the last bite out of oh, me. Oh, yeah. I, I'll be here I for could you. be half cockroach because cockroaches have just <laughs> terrorized my body and torn it apart and just eaten me. It, like, I'm literally getting eaten alive by a roach infestation. Yeah. And I'll still go, welcome back to Breaking Takes. You can't see the <laughs> bottom half of me right now, but it's gone. Roaches have <laughs> killed me, but I'm still alive somehow. So, yes. um, and yeah, if you don't want to do Breaking Takes Premium, but you want to support the show, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify before your hands get eaten by roaches and bed bugs. You can use those thumbs to give us five stars and re- and leave a comment. And if you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it at the end of the show. Uh, no matter what it is, good, bad. We hope yeah, you like good, the show, bad. but if you have some qualms, we're also going to read it and take our medicine live on the show. So support sure. us that way. Yeah. Go to Break Takes Premium if you want extra episodes, and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time. If you're already a roach, tell your roach yes. friends. Listen Can to Can never have takes. enough roaches. Peace.